As you can see, the beautiful vistas, wildlife, getting away from the pavement in the city and just enjoying the outdoors. We have skiing, we have backpacking, and anything from horseback riding trails to mountain bike riding, and there's also rock climbing, and we're going rafting tomorrow, so it'll be pretty fun. People come here to have a great adventure and just to really be in the great outdoors and see this magnificent place for themselves. Invasive species are a critical threat to America's outdoor heritage. The places we love to go are under a serious threat. Invasive species can take over a habitat and just destroy it. They move by wind, water, animals move them, humans. One of those seeds can get lodged in a boot and can get dislodged maybe when you step in a puddle further down in the interior and start a whole new infestation in a new part of the state or the country where that species wasn't before. And it's not just plants that we're concerned about. There are all different kinds of organisms that outcompete the native biodiversity. And that's a problem because, I mean, look at this place. This is incredible. We don't want to lose this resource. Outdoor recreationists can do a lot to prevent the spread of invasive species in the areas that they love. It's this combination of recreation and stewardship. So get yourself educated. These places are beautiful and this is where we all recreate and if we don't take care of them, they're not going to be here. There are almost as many ways to enjoy America's outdoors as there are Americans. And our country's public and private lands offer ideal locations for our recreational opportunities. We'd really appreciate it if folks stay on the trail. Now, the stewards of these great natural places are calling on all of us to help prevent an environmental disaster that is rising all around us. Every region of our country is being invaded by harmful exotic species, plants, animals, insects, and pathogens that do not belong here and threaten the health of our native ecosystems. With few natural enemies to keep them in check, these exotic invaders are overwhelming our native species and dramatically changing the natural balance that gives our lands and waters their distinctive American character. It's a quickening disaster that, for many, has gone unnoticed. Yet a growing number of Americans are noticing, and they are answering the call, adopting proactive, preventative outdoor practices that enable all of us who love the American outdoors to fight back and protect the natural beauty and diversity of the places we enjoy most. Acadia National Park is just one of my favorite places here in Maine. You've got Cadillac Mountain, which is the first place in the United States where the sun supposedly touches first thing in the morning. You've got the rocks, you've got the ocean. It's unique in New England. And to have people working and helping prevent the spread of invasive species keeps places like Acadia for more people to enjoy. If we do this here now, and especially if we work with the communities that are also part of this area, we're gonna be able to keep the invasives off this island and get rid of the few that we have. Certainly as you walk, you have to consider that you might have picked up a seed or another thing that could start an invasive plant in a new place. And so definitely clean off boots, clothing, and gear before you move to new areas. Guides have a lot of influence on people, and they listen to what we say. We try to educate people. Have fun out there. Thanks. We stop on islands occasionally, and we try to leave as little impact as possible. We stress LNT, leave no trace. If you put your kayak back on top of your car, you make sure you don't have a lot of mud or weeds to make sure you didn't drag anything along with you when you go to another area. In north central Maine, you'll find Baxter State Park a diverse home for the many native animals and plants found in our northern forests and wetlands. Our lakes and ponds here in Maine are a very important part of our state's economy. 
property values start plummeting when a lake becomes infested with an aquatic invader. Recreational values also decline. I mean, look around you right now. This, this is what's at stake. So if you spot something suspicious, run it through the field guide. If it checks out to be native, then you're fine. And if not, bag a sample, mark the location, and send it to us. You probably aren't going to learn all of the aquatic plants, but you can learn the five that are growing in front of your camp. Out west, in the Rocky Mountains, recreationists learn how to enjoy and protect these wild and spectacular natural resources. We provide family vacations. We do a, just a typical guest dude ranch on the San Isabel National Forest uh, through special use permits with the, the Forest Service. If we see nauseous weed, we report it, of course. If it's a small patch, we, we destroy it. All the animals are groomed prior to saddling. We feed certified weed-free hay. Whoa. We're on the south side of the Tin Cup Pass, right near the Continental Divide. It's not a real smooth road, but that's part of the appeal, is bouncing up here in a Jeep or on an ATV, dirt bike. When folks are ever using this beautiful area and traveling on the trails, the main thing is for them to stay on the trails, not get off where they're disturbing the ground, and making new sites for weeds to get a foothold. And it's also important to clean your equipment, ATVs, dirt bikes, Jeeps. That's what it should all be about, is keeping it just the way it is, just the way you saw it. Don't change anything. We're on the Arkansas River, the most recreated whitewater river in the country. We do have invasive aquatic species in Colorado. Everything's interconnected via waterways and pipelines, etc. We can be a conduit between the moving waters, so uh, we can just get people to clean and drain and drive their boats between uses, and that can be a, a real advantage because uh, really those little critters can hide just about in anything that's wet. If your boat ends up in Oregon's Umpqua River, you should know how to protect this environmental gem from aquatic invasive species. On the Deschutes River, they have New Zealand mud snails. And if you're rafting the river and you come here, especially if your gear is still wet from the Deschutes, when you go into the Umpqua, you might be losing some of those mud snails in, yeah. into this river and they'd get established. So the best thing is to let things dry long enough so that the snails dry out. Prevention is so much easier than eradication later. Yep. Linville Gorge Wilderness Area in North Carolina is a mecca for hikers and rock climbers, but vulnerable to harmful exotic species. We offer guided rock climbing trips. We also talk about how we can protect the environment. And with the invasive species, you know, we point out this to people as we're hiking in along the trail so they understand that a little bit better. Because this is everybody's land and we need to take care of it so it's here for future generations. Climbers are a community of people that continually travel. Plant material could be taken from here and inadvertently dispersed as far away as California, Canada. Climbers go where the rock is. When they fold up their rope bags, let's look for something that's not native and try to keep from carrying it out. The Appalachian National Scenic Trail runs from Georgia to Maine. People enjoy volunteering, which is a huge component of the Appalachian Trail. It's what makes it it's special. As a hiker, you can always make sure that when you're going into a new area that your boots are clean, that your clothes are clean, that if you have a dog that you're making sure that it's clean before and after it's come off the trail to minimize the spread of those seed sources. We encourage volunteers to come out and we train them how to use our data sheets, our GPS units. We go out on the trail, we train them how to collect data on invasive plant occurrences. This is Colt's foot. You collect the species, the latitude and longitude, and enter that data onto EDMAPS, is early detection distribution mapping. It's a national web database so that we can protect our native species that are unique to this area.
Camping is a great way to enjoy nature and an opportunity to protect it from exotic invaders. There's an art to camping. There's an art to making yourself comfortable and, and uh, getting along well outdoors. And uh, wanted the kids to learn that as well. Invasive species can hitch a ride on camping equipment and vehicles. Campers can stop the spread by inspecting and cleaning their tents and other gear before moving to a new area. Invasive forest insects and diseases can infest firewood. You can protect America's forests by not moving firewood and by practicing burn it where you buy it. Just enjoy that great outdoors. Cities and municipalities build these greenways because they want to get the public involved in the area. But greenways become vectors for invasive species that move from one place to another. People like to bike on these trails. And one thing that's really important for these folks to do is to take their bikes, make sure and inspect them because they may carry invasive plant materials. A large percentage of our customers and skiers are here for aesthetics, for beauty, to experience nature in winter, to not want to you know, change in any way, but just to appreciate it. I love this place. It's just so beautiful and so unique. But, you know, when there's no leaves on the trees and there's no plant sprouting out of the ground, you don't think about invasive species. We're feeling the effects of invasive species. There's quite a few coming through the trails, and it's impacting our forest every day. I clean off all my gear before I put it in my truck. I try to be really careful that if I do collect stuff to clean it off. The cave environment is quite delicate. Our motto is take nothing but pictures, leave nothing but carefully placed footprints, and kill nothing but time. Bats are very, very important to the environment. Most of our bat species are insect eaters, so they're helping control forest and crop pests but they have a lot of threats. The greatest invasive threat to North America's bat populations is white-nose syndrome, a deadly disease that leaves a white residue on bats and could be accidentally spread by cavers and other recreationists. Because we don't know what is causing white nose and how it's being transmitted, we have to be ultra cautious. We want to make sure we decontaminate all our gear. Or we have a set of clothing and gear that we dedicate specifically to a particular area and we don't transport it from site to site. Cavers, like all other recreationists, are doing their best to keep nature in balance and be part of the solution rather than part of the problem. Birding is one of the fastest growing outdoor recreation activities in America. But invasive species are a threat to important bird habitats. Native plants are very important to the native wildlife, like the migratory birds that come through. The birds will continue to come through here if it's a good place, or we will see significant drop off and no birds here anymore. One of the first things you could do is to become familiar with those plants that don't belong. As birders, we will be aware that something has changed, something that probably doesn't belong there. And we can bring these to the park, the refuge, or the county's attention. We are all different. We enjoy different challenges, and we use our nation's lands and waters differently. Yet we are all alike in embracing our shared responsibility to protect these great places. And all of us who love this nation's distinctive character agree that it is too precious to lose. Invasive species are spreading at thousands of acres per year across the United States. So it's education, prevention, early detection, rapid response. So those are the key things that we can do fairly quickly. The requirement for an outdoor recreator today, first they have to be aware that they could harm their environment, that their normal activity that they love to do could spread an invasive species. The second thing is to prevent the spread. Check out your clothing, decontaminate your equipment, and then be active in being able to report the impact of invasive species in an environment that you're enjoying. One of the most important things you can do to tread lightly and be a good steward is stay on the designated trail 
It's also important to wash that vehicle. If you see weeds, pull them off. Clean your boat, clean your trailer. There's also websites to help you learn how to minimize your impacts and hopefully maintain your access for future opportunities. The most important thing for me, why I would want to definitely preserve this is because I'm also a grandma. And our most important thing is our legacy. To lose places like this would be a disgrace. I think we'd run out of books to write because we run out of time to pause. And that's what we need to do. For more information, visit InvasiveSpeciesInfo.gov.